Hi and welcome to Dark Principles Orbit Tutorial. In this tutorial we will be taking a planet and a moon and we'll be making the moon orbit the planet. However, there's one quick thing I wish to address. I've come across many people um, as I've done these tutorials with varying different opinions and one of the most common opinions is that mathematics is difficult. So there's two things I'd like to show in this tutorial. First is that mathematics isn't a very scary thing. It's just like commands. Once you, uh, you learn the tools of the trade, then you've got no issues. But the second thing I want to show is you don't always have to resort to mathematics. Whenever people think of um, two objects orbiting, then your mind will immediately go to trigonometry, sine and cos to achieve it. But again, you don't have to. Um, there is another way of doing it, which I will show you. I'm going to use some straightforward um, variable names here so everyone knows exactly what they're looking at and they can have a look at the uh, the sum um, or the formula rather than the numbers which often confuses people. Um, so radius equals 15, that's going to be a whole number so we don't have to make that a float. Degrees will be in, um, in point numbers so decimal points so that's going to be a float and we're going to have two other um, pieces of data x pos as float and y pos as float. That stands for x, x position and y position. And next we're going to type in our standards environment initialization section. So sync on sync rate 60 and back drop on color and back drop zero and auto cam off. And uh, next we're going to set up our camera. So position camera 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 50 so we're going up by the z axis by 50 and we want our camera to look at um, the middle of the screen or the middle of our 3d space so point camera uh, 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 0 and this will set, uh, point it at the uh, middle of our 3d space if you don't understand this then i cover these quite in depth um, with my dvd tutorials uh, next we're going to create two objects, so make object sphere 1 comma 10 and make object sphere 2 comma 1. So we've got a definite size difference and now we're going to start our main loop section and uh, we're going to right what we need to do initially is ensure that our number of degrees is consistently going upwards otherwise our object will remain static so ink short for increase degrees comma one so you want to increase it by one um, i also want to ensure that degrees never exceeds 360 because um, there's only 360 degrees in a circle so degrees equals wrap value open bracket degrees close bracket and that will assume that if we go above um, uh, 360 then it will reset it to 1 and if you go below 0 it will reset it to 360 so uh, that's fairly straightforward and now the complicated math bit that everyone seems so scared of uh, x pos equals radius times cos degrees close bracket y pos radius whoops y pos equals radius times sine open bracket degrees close bracket and that's it that's our complicated math done so uh, nothing scary about that at all next we're going to position object to x pos comma y pos and fix the uh, z axis as zero uh, next we're going to finish with our sync and loop so all quite standard i'll just put uh, an indentation there so it's a bit easier for me to read and that's it that is our scary trigonometry that everyone seems so worried about so we're going to run this program now and providing I've typed it all incorrectly and don't embarrass myself as usual uh, we should have a uh, 3D object in the middle, there we go, we got our planet and we have our moon going around it. 
and it really is that simple. So next time you need to create a bit of orbit code, and there are many reasons for using it, for instance, doors opening, swinging open on hinges, um, you've got the orbit code there, will be useful, and you've got many other examples you can use it for as well. But that's basically it. So you can write down that little bit of code, pull it into uh, your personal archive, or write it down in a book some or something, uh, and, and that's it. You can just use it as a tool as if it was the print command. So uh, that's our first way of doing it. The second way is going to be achieving the same result without using a single line of mathematics. And all this requires is a little bit of, well, it just requires thinking in a slightly different way. Instead of thinking in mathematical trigonometry terms, you can think um, in 3D terms, in 3D visualization, sorry, in 3D space, you can visualize exactly what you need to do. And for this program, all we're basically going to do is rotate the object move it backwards by um, a certain number of units, and then uh, update the screen visually, um, reverse the direction, so put the object back where it was, increase the angle, and repeat the same action. We're just going to do that over and over again, and we will produce the same result as the mathematical method. So sync on, sync rate 60, back drop on, color back drop 0, Auto cam off, and we're going to pitch uh, camera down. I don't know if any of you in the past have done, have used a program language called Logo. This was taught when I was in school, uh, so this would be um, in the 90s, where you basically had a little robot that you plugged in and you gave it simple commands like forward um, 20, backwards 20, turn left 90 degrees, etc. And you use loops and all the sort of programming um, I'm using here to manipulate this robot around the, around the floor. So it's a different way of thinking, but it's just as valid. So uh, we've pitched our camera down by 90 degrees, as you would in Logo, and move a camera uh, 0, comma, minus 50. And then we're going to make object sphere 1 comma 10, uh, make object sphere 2 comma 1. And I'm going to start off by moving object 2 comma, whoops, 2 comma 15 and uh, starting it off in that position. The reason for that will become apparent in a moment. So we're going to do our do sync and loop and put our commands in between these two points and now we're going to move object 2 comma minus 15. Now you may think that's pointless why did he move it to 15 then move it right back where it was. Well the reason is because um, every time this cycles this is going to be our reset line so this will move the position sorry the object to the position it was originally and next we're going to type in turn object right 2 comma 1 so exactly the same as you did with ink um, degrees we're just turning the object by one degrees or assigning that number of degrees and now we're going to type in move object 2 comma 15 so we've moved it back 15 units so it's now at the center of the screen we've turned the object right by one degree and now we've moved it back to 15 units and now when that visual data is presented um, the moon will have moved away from the center of the screen by one degree and uh, it will then uh, update the screen visually return here remove the um, moon back to the center position of the screen then we'll move down to the next line turn the object again by another one degree um, go to the next line move it back to 15 and update it visually so these two moves here the program the user who's watching the program will be blissfully unaware of so we'll run the program now and hopefully i haven't made one of my famous mistakes and there we go so we now have a moon orbiting around a planet and it's achieved the same effect by using two different methods.
So I hope I've opened your minds up to uh, um, the fact that you can think in different ways. You don't have to approach a problem in one particular way. You can approach it in other ways as well. So if, you, if you're no good at thinking in mathematical terms, if, if uh, cosine and sine confuse you, but you're quite good at thinking in logo terms, which is given instructions and, and working in this kind of format, then you have an alternative. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and I hope you'll be back for future tutorials.